scene, ladies and gentlemen, of hockey played by people standing upright uh, is that there is a major, you know, big <coughs> personality. These guys have major personality taking it onto the ice, and they have their long sticks that they're whacking around that little puck. Now, just imagine uh, those large refrigerator shaped people uh, <laughs> without legs. Right? Okay. Spinal injury, paralysis, amputation, congenital spina bifida. These are things, and yet their person remains a hockey player. Oh, oh, oh. Ha! <laughs> they want it, they've got to have it. So what do they do? They sit down. You are an athlete, you've got your butt in a plastic bucket that is set on skate blades four inches off of the ice, and you're playing sled hockey. Now in America you're playing sled hockey, in the rest of the world you're playing sledge hockey, except in uh, Quebec, because French Canadians play hockey sur luge. <laughs> now, I'm going to change up this diver. This is Le Luge, the sled. Sled hockey started in Sweden in the 1960s, and the first seats were indeed plastic buckets. So this is called the bucket. This is the frame. This little piece right here is the skin. This is the stick. You've seen the hockey sticks that the upright gentlemen have been playing with are long and sharply angled like that because they're basically golfing on ice. The sled hockey stick is much shorter, about the size of my arm, and the angle is much gentler because it's shorter. And the butt end of the stick has steel picks on it. And sled hockey players have two of these, one in each hand, because that's all right. <laughs> because uh, they can play with the puck this way and put the puck beneath their legs, and that's how they're doing it. And then they hold it up here, and the picks. This is how you get it around, like this. And this is how you get speed. Now, the frame, of course, as I'm doing, is where you put whatever you got in Biomax. There, that isn't too useful off the ice, and it's really not useful on the ice because it's weight. And so some people have one leg, some people have no legs, half a leg, one and a half legs. It all changes the weight ratio, and that's what makes, one of the things that makes sled hockey players like real, uh, not, not real, but like other athletes, like every other athlete, there are advantages and disadvantages according to your individual physique. What my informant, the uh, wonderful Randy Quapis at Mobility Sports Incorporated, Fort Wayne, told me on the phone, he uh, calls the uh, guys with few or no legs, amps, double amputees, amps, that's what they're called, amps, they call themselves amps. So it's the amps that have the greatest speed and agility on the ice because they have less weight up here. And uh, anybody sitting in the bucket, male or female, anybody playing, can use their tummy muscles to lift that up just enough off the ice and get more speed. But it's the players with no biomass up here, no weight, that can get the best speed, the best agility, turn the sharpest, handle the puck, and play any position. So the uh, similarities between sled hockey and uh, regular, what I call upright hockey, are uh, pretty, they're all, use all the same rules. Uh, standard ice ring in, uh, in uh, 1994 was the first time that uh, sled hockey was part of the Paralympics and also the first year that the Paralympics used the same uh, facilities as the regular Olympics. They were in Lillehammer, Norway. And uh, that was the first time sled hockey was part of the Paralympics. Uh, sled hockey, as I said, started 
in uh, Sweden in the 1960s. By 1969, there were five teams in Sweden. They had their whole league. And then the Canadians picked it up in the 1970s. U.S. picked it up in the 1980s. And today, there are 15 countries with sled hockey leagues. And uh, regional and local teams are able to accept able-bodied players who just want one more challenge. And because of all these, uh, now there are a couple of differences, significant differences from sled hockey from ice hockey. Team rosters are limited to 15 players and two complete lines and two goalies as compared to three or four lines in conventional ice hockey. Each period is 15 minutes long instead of 20 minutes. And uh, when players benches and penalty boxes, they can't get there, they just sit on the ice by the walls. They just sit there. And one reason I have come to like sled hockey in learning about it is that it moves more slowly than conventional ice hockey with the upright guys. And because of that, I can follow the puck, I can watch individual players, I can see people's <laughs> style of playing. And what I really see is that these players sitting there, going over around the ice like this, choo -choo -choo -choo, are just as badass as these people standing upright. In fact, more so. And they want to say, and Randy Quavis of Fort Wayne says, don't feel sorry for any of these people because the urge to compete and drive yourself to the edge of your, and the raw edge of life doesn't change just because you've lost a leg or two. Thank you.